Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is episode number 71 of my This and That series. I haven't made one in about three or four months. And to start out with here, just a little teaser on a video coming up soon. It'll be tips number 826, where I talk about the beautiful set of six Sterrett micrometers. Big deal. Well, it is a big deal, because these are very special custom-made micrometers during the Second World War for sight-impaired veterans. These are Braille micrometers, so I'll talk all about that in number 826. In a very recent short subject video, I talked about stubby drill bits, and I had such wonderful comments on that. Not a whole lot of people watched it, but a lot of comments about uh, how other people like these and how and why they use them. So just a real quick update on that, and then we'll move on. Okay, in that recent video, Short Subjects number 9, I talked about stubby drill bits and how useful they are. And in the comments, several people mentioned things and expanded on that, so I will reiterate that. But go back and look in the comments, which are always very interesting. But there's a lot of uses for the stubby bits. And one person said that on the miniature milling machines that you got very little room in there and it's a pain to move the table up and down in fact you can't you have to raise and lower the head and that takes a lot of time sometimes throws off the alignment so a stubby bit is handier than sliced bread but one other thing that I wanted to show you is that when we put pop rivets in eighth inch pop rivets we typically use a larger bit and uh, a number 30 is what they usually sell in the store near the pop rivets quite often. So these are number 30, just a couple thousandths larger than an eighth inch pop rivet. So you can easily get the, the rivet into place, into the hole, because sometimes you're up on the ladder and it's hot and you're just absolutely miserable. So anyway, they sell these number 30s and probably eighth inch also as double ended so not only are they short but as soon as you break a bit and you're done swearing instead of getting down you can just reverse it so that is really a neat idea double ended stubby drill bits get some I'm not sure I mentioned it but other people said well you know longer bits tend to deflect they flex I don't know if you can see it, but I'm actually bending that long. This is extra long, but even this, a jobber's length will flex and deflect and walk around and just do all kinds of crazy things. So the stubby bits are awesome for that. Many viewers out there have these right angle drill bits. This is corded, but they also sell them in the cordless now. But coupled with a stubby bit, you can get into very tight places, including uh, under a dashboard or something like that. Because in fact here, what we have is about a total of a four inch length. And you could even cut the stubby bit off shorter than that if you needed that extra fraction of an inch, which you sometimes do on those impossible jobs. And those come up all the time. So get yourself one of these. These are kind of costly though. But when you compare the right angle bit with a stubby, to your regular drill with a standard jobber's length. What did I say this was? About 4 inches and this is about 11 inches. So there's a big difference of getting to tight spots. You may not have seen it yet but I'm talking about stubby reamers in a future video too. But besides stubby bits they also sell extra long bits sometimes called aircraft bits and there's I might do a real short video on that, not a whole lot to cover. Matter of fact, what I'm showing you now is probably enough, but all right, let's move on. Thanks for watching, by the way. Raise your hand if you remember Smiley Burnett from the movies and television. He was the comic relief sidekick for Gene Autry and Roy Rogers, possibly others. Appeared in uh, several television series, and I think the main one was Petticoat Junction. That, I may be wrong on that. Or it might have been Green Acres. I don't know. One of those. I didn't like those shows. But he also did a lot of voiceovers for Disney in cartoons. But he liked his home shop. So he built crazy things like this. I don't know what it is. <laughs> for the water to float around. Let me show you just a, a few other close-ups. Because this is out of a real old 1952 
Mechanics Illustrated. So there's a few other pictures. I'll put stills of this at the end of this video because I doubt anyone's interested in this. And I think it's just interesting that some of these rich men out in Hollywood, well, he probably didn't make all that much money, but they were interested in down-to-earth things in the shop in their spare time, the same as you and I. Remember the actor George Montgomery who was married to Dinah Shore? He was an excellent woodworker, and he made furniture and other things for Roy Rogers, of all things. And he was a sculptor as well, and as being an actor. Smiley had a very unusual voice that you might remember, and that was exploited in his voice-over roles in the Disney movies. Very memorable. What I'm going to tell you now is a follow-up to something I mentioned in a recent video in regards to striking your punches, whatever they are, with copper or brass hammer, never lead, and never steel. And what is the purpose of that? And I had a lot of suggestions there that I never thought of, but if you're using a chisel or a punch like this, and just doing a lot of hammering, it prevents some of the mushrooming, because the mushrooming will happen here instead of here. But really, the reason that I like to do it with number or letter punches is this, and that was my experience as a teacher. I had the students stamp their name on every project, and of course they're using a ball-peen hammer, which is what I told them to do, but I could hear it from clear across the shop, bling, when they hit that, and it just flew across the shop, never to be found again. So because of that, I used to keep spares. I had a whole set that came from a hardware store that had perhaps 10 of each. So I had all kinds of replacements because of that, uh, that set that I had to overcome the loss of these because, of course, they'd be losing the letter A or E or whatever it is. And, uh, of, co of course, the kids would also stamp something hard just to be malicious and, and ruin this. So I had a lot of spares. But if you use this hammer, that doesn't seem to happen. So it really is a wonderful thing. And I suffered with that probably for 20 years, and I was telling my brother about it, and he says, Well, you fool, have them use a soft hammer, and that won't happen. Twang! What do you think? Here I am at the Thresherman's Fair in the fall of 2022 with my grandson Henry. Look at how big he's getting, but not nearly as big as this beautiful retired Budweiser Clydesdale. Here's another one. I was quite excited to meet Terrell of Terrell Fixes All. Be sure and watch his comedy videos. He is a wonderful teacher and wonderful mechanic, and he is funnier than heck. And he was there displaying his Palomino and a few, and that's a, a little Jeep, it's not a horse. Uh, and we're saying, get your supper or something like that, with a, one of his catchphrases. And, I, I was actually uh, mesmerized by him and uh, uh, starstruck is what I meant to say, meeting this guy, and I'm mildly jealous of him because his teeth are better than mine. Be sure and watch his channel. I'll put the link right here in, uh, in the picture. A couple more pictures of him, if you will. Terrell Fixes All is the name of the channel. I'm not going to do it in this video, but I am prepared to make about a 10-minute rant. I mean a tremendous rant. I, I'm just totally going off on the post office and what they have done to me, even though I spent $3,000 for prepaid packages like this, and I'm getting packages that, that either totally disappear and you can't collect the insurance. They are guilty of uh, postal fraud, mail fraud. So this package arrived empty, and they're not ashamed of it. They just put a sticker on it and hand it to you. They wrecked my mailbox. Well, I'm doing the rant now. No, I'm going to save that. But are you willing to listen to that, or don't you want to hear all of that? Because I'm going to show a little anger in that, because I'm really mad at them, although they do get it right over 99% of the time, and they have a big, big job to do. But that doesn't excuse them. 
I'm out in Studio B now. Do you remember when I recently restored this beautiful Wilton Vice? And then I did another video, I forgot the number, you can look it up, where I mounted the vise onto a plate so that I wouldn't have to drill any more holes in my table because I got all kinds of holes and I don't want any more when I switch vices and I'm always switching vices. I don't know why, I guess it's one of my vices. Well, I was looking for thicker seal. This is about 3 8 thick. I wanted some half. And I had asked my grandson Henry, no, my grandson Jordan, <laughs> uh, can you find some for me? Well, he said, yeah, I will. And, and he didn't, and he didn't. So I went ahead and did it this way. And then about a week after that video came out, he said, I bought that steel for you, Grandpa, that you wanted. So here are some half inch plates. However, they are round. Now that pizza pie there is too small, but I could use this, or could have, but I typically, I think I probably would have cut one side off like this and then put it over in the corner, maybe two sides, something like this, and left the rest on there because that's a lot of cutting, but this half inch thick steel would have been stronger and held the bolts a little bit better. I had all kinds of other uh, comments regarding uh, using a countersunk screw in here instead of the way I did it. A countersunk screw in the larger sizes takes, will reduce, I don't know how to put it, but you, you go almost all the way through the thinner work. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't work. You try it. <laughs> all right. About a month ago, I went to an auction and I picked up this ring roller. It's called a ring roller because you can roll rings out of flat stock or round stock but to me it doesn't work very good at all I don't know why I bought it actually I hate it but I put this angle iron on here so that I could hold it in the vise let me set it up here real quickly because I didn't want to bolt it to the table it did come with a base so this is the general idea the general purpose of this is is to crank this and the rollers will turn well, I've already got it set for the smallest ring possible, and you, as you can see, it doesn't work. The rollers are too soft. I already wore some of the neural off them, or it was worn off when I got it. But it, it just doesn't work well at all. And I don't really care, but I do love to make fun of this outfit that's out in the harbor, or out in the bay. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, I can't get it out of there, but it doesn't matter because... I don't intend to keep this very long, but I want to show you, the reason I'm showing you this is there's something very, very funny here, I believe. So here's the original plans that came with it, and they call it a metal planetary ring roller. Well, those idiots, and they are idiots, have no idea what planetary gears are, because these aren't planetary gears any more than a man on the moon. There's two gears in there of equal size, and they're not even shown well in the manual there, or I would show you the parts list, which is about worthless. And it's a plastic cover, so it's a total piece of junk, and it's pretty useless anyway. So I thought you'd get a kick out of that, that they did not know what planetary gears were. So I went back to one of their stores and walked around, and I, they still sell these, but I read, I think they're about $70, but I read the description, and they no longer call it planetary. There's another name. I think they just call it a ring roller. So, how funny is that? Leave a comment. Am I too hard on that outfit or not hard enough? <laughs> Longtime viewer Bob Cody was passing through an airport and I forgot where he said, but they had this magnificent display of foundry patterns and he said nobody was looking at them and no one cared. Everyone's in a hurry. Stop Better not. Way too busy. I doubt very much if you can read that, but there was a placard there explaining what patterns are. Did anyone care? You decide. Well, that concludes this episode of This and That. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure and watch some of my, well, well over a thousand shop videos. You might like some of them. I'll see you next time. Please leave a comment that isn't too brutal on me.